Hello, and welcome to Write Volumes, Pride History More. Write Volumes goal is to give diverse voices an outlet for expression, which we have been doing through our anthology series. In order to celebrate Pride Month, we decided to give people a Pride History present. Here is a quick intro to a writer you may not know, but maybe you should. Iftikhar Nassim. Iftikhar Nassim, also known as Ifti, was born in Faisalabad, Pakistan in 1946, the fifth of seven kids of his father's first marriage. His mother died when he was young. Nassim once said, as one of a large family, I was the invisible child. Growing up, Nassim experienced bullying, ostracization, and loneliness as a gay youth. He was passionate about poetry, became an activist who opposed Pakistan's martial law, and Nassim was once shot in the leg during a protest. He earned a law degree from Punjab University in Lahore, and in 1971, at the age of 21, Nassim immigrated to the United States, supposedly after reading a Life magazine article touting America's acceptance of gays, where he hoped to avoid persecution and an arranged marriage. Nassim told the Chicago Tribune, I did not want to live a double life. I did not want to leave a wife at home and go out and pick up guys. I thought that was a dishonest way of living. In America, Nassim continued writing poetry and enrolled at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan, then moved to Chicago in 1974, where he spent most of his life. He wrote poems in Urdu and Punjabi, two of the languages spoken in Pakistan, as well as English. Nassim published three books of poems in Urdu, conveying themes of the plight of the LGBT people in Muslim and third world countries. His most popular collection, Narman, which is a Persian word for hermaphrodite, was published in 1994 and is believed to be the first open expression of homosexual themes in Urdu. This sparked a movement called Narmani, or honest poetry. Narman was distributed throughout Europe, the United Kingdom, Norway, Sweden, and Germany, as well as underground in Pakistan and India, where it was met with controversy. This book helped bring awareness to gay rights, but it also earned him death threats from religious people and groups. The two other books of poetry explored gay love, longing, and the pressures of heteronormity. Mermecophile Mer was published by Ex Libris in 2000, while Abdaz was published in 2005. For those who don't know, a mermecophile is defined as a foreign organism, plant or insect that lives more or less permanently in an ant colony. In 1993, Nassim became the first poet from a developing nation to read his work at Chicago's Harold Washington Library Center. Nassim was inducted into the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame in 1996, partly for his poetry and partly for co-founding Sangat Chicago, an organization which helped South Asian gays and lesbians. Nassim died in Chicago of a sudden heart attack at the age of 64 in 2011. Now let's look at some of Nassim's writing. The first poem, why the children did not knock on my door. The lines I will read are from the middle of the poem. What happened? Who played these dirty tricks on me? 31 year as a law abiding citizen, I am still a foreigner. Foreigner with a crude face and the features of a terrorist. My color two shades darker than an average white man is not accepted anymore. My cafe au lait color, once I was so proud of, is a guilt trip for me now. My ethnicity has become a crime. Nassim felt ostracized in Pakistan, and I think these lights convey the alienation he felt in America as well. He didn't feel one shade darker, but two, which to me hints at the magnitude of the separation he felt between mainstream America and himself. He ends the poem with, I am tired, I am tired. I feel like Rosa Park and there's no bus for me because I'm not only two shades darker than an average white man, but I'm also a Muslim. So not only has his ethnicity become a crime, he should feel guilty about also being a Muslim. The next poem, A Boy Taught Me How to Kiss, starts off with 
Playing cricket was praying five times at once. Every evening after we all gathered in the school ground, like different sets of animals around the watering hole in the Serengeti. I love his imagery of how playing the game of cricket was like praying five times at, at once, alluding to the Muslim call to prayer five times a day and how popular the sport of cricket could be to people. Just like how American football can be a religion to some people or football or soccer could be to um, Europeans. His descriptions are primal and natural comparing people and animals with school becoming a watering hole and how we all have thirst for water or knowledge. The poem ends with, he held my face in his palms and put his lips on mine. Fragrance of freshly dropped rain on hot earth surged in my palate. I was tasting clouds. That's how you kiss a girl, he whispered in my ear. This is so central and riveting. You could feel the hands, the surge, and the taste of the cloud. But then the final words adds another layer and makes me wonder why it has to be how to kiss a girl. It alludes to how this passion needs to be kept hidden under a mask of heteronormativity. Then I wondered if there was a double meaning to the word cloud. Instead of thinking cloud meant being on cloud nine happy, could it be also a cloud as in blocking our sight, clouding our judgment, or obscuring visions? It turns a love poem into a question of propriety. Well, this has been a Write Volumes Pride History More, and there are many more Pride History presents if you look. Feel free to follow Write Volumes on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or check out our website at www.writevolumes.com. Thank you.